Yo guys, what's in store today? A camera build video. Let's check it out. Welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name is Chris Warren. I'm a Los Angeles based director of photography. In today's video, we're going to be going over my Blackmagic Design Pocket 6K Cinema build. So this is my Blackmagic Design Pocket 6K Cinema build. This is the build that I usually take out on most of my jobs. There are exceptions and I do configure it differently for each job. This is, this is in my studio build for most narrative or commercials. This is how the camera will be built for dock work, for corporate work. Usually I'll strip it down so it's a little lighter and a little smaller. One interesting fact is that this camera has actually worked more this year in 2023 than my Ursa Mini Pro 12K. The reason being is this camera is lighter and smaller, obviously, being a pocket, but with 2023, the writer strike and the actor strike, most of my work as a freelancer this year has been corporate or sports based. This camera just being smaller and easier to manage as a one man band or with a smaller crew has been really great. And so I think that's also why it's just worked more this year. Let's break this down and see what goes on this. basic pocket so I actually got this camera right after the pocket 6k g2 was announced and released I picked this up on eBay it came with the cage handle this battery plate this rod system for a very good price I think I picked it up for maybe around 1500 which I think was a great price considering that the camera was still retailing for somewhere around like 2000 plus it had all the rigging and everything I just found it to be a great buy the production company that was selling it had it listed as um, they used it as a C cam and so it had apparently very low hours and wasn't used very much and they were just offloading gear so I've picked it up and it's actually been quite the workhorse since so yeah so this build is kind of my run and gun really got to grab the shot last minute build i always keep a canon lp6 battery in here um so it's always being charged by my anton bowers but uh it's always great to pop it off and if i need to go steal a quick insert or just grab a shot real quick or uh do some minimal walking or tracking shots i love the form factor of this i love the the weight of it and how I can just go anywhere and get the shot with this configuration. This is the lens that lives on this camera most of the time. It's the Canon 24 to 105 f4 zoom. The cage on this camera is a small rig cage for the pocket 6k or 4k. What's really cool is that this has a Manfrotto style plate on it. So this can go right onto a tripod as is. So if I'm doing a live event and I need to throw this camera on some sticks in the corner and I don't want to have it all rigged out and just run AC power to it, this is what this is what I put on. And it and actually this has worked recently as last week. It covered a wrestling event from high up. Didn't have the top handle on it, but it was on sticks, looking down at the ring and it worked it was great it was a nice light and out of the way the handle i have on here is a small rig screw on handle personally i'm not a fan of this it tends to loosen over time it does have the re pins to keep it in place but it still loosens and a lot of the times i'll pick up this entire build by the top handle i have my monitor on here so this supports a lot of the weight of the camera and 
to have it loosen, I just need something more secure. So I'm actually looking at getting a NATO based rail, which is really cool design of the small rig cage because it does accept a NATO rail up top there. So I plan on replacing that at some point. Um, maybe if this camera continues to work a lot, that will be more of a priority purchase. Also, I keep a small rig arm screwed into the top handle here. The, uh, this has the locking pins as well. This actually works a lot better than this top handle, so it prevents rotation and uh, keeps the monitor pretty secure. So this small rig base plate, it accepts the camera plate from the cage and it's also a dovetail and it also can, has 3 8 and quarter 20 mounting points underneath in which I put a Manfrotto plate on here just for easy access. Um, I only have one dovetail which my 12K usually occupies. In this case I can just slide this right onto my Manfrotto head or my O'Connor head that has a Manfrotto plate pretty easily and pop it right off. I have a couple of, I have no idea what brand these rods are. They were part of the package of the used camera that I bought. So this battery plate is a Tilta Universal battery plate. You could still get it online from their website. I had no idea this thing existed. This was, this came along with the used camera package. What's really cool about it is the amount of D-taps on it. There's all these, there's one up top here, there's one underneath, and I'm sure there's another one somewhere. No, there's just five D-tap ports. You got two Limo power ports, and you have an SDI in and a couple outs right here, which I think are really cool. I haven't figured out how to use it properly yet with the pocket camera, with that being HDMI, but hopefully if Blackmagic ever releases an SDI version of the pocket, then I can utilize this a little more. But for right now, this battery plate is perfect for this build. So putting the camera on and powering it, I keep the D-tap powered in down here. And this cable is a Condor Blue Pocket 6K power cable. So we just pop the camera on, like so, lock it down. And then power it in. So that's step one of the rig. So yeah, this big bad boy, it's a 150 watt hour battery. This will power the camera, monitor, and wireless for almost a full 12 hour day if I just left everything on all day. But with powering off like for lunch and changing setups or scenes, yeah, easily lasts me all day. If not, then pretty close to it. So next, we'll start with the front of the camera. This is a ProAIM follow focus that I've now owned for probably 13 years now. I got it with a DSLR rig package from ProAIM for like, I think at the time, like $100 or $125, which for a budding filmmaker straight out of college was a lot of money, <laughs> all right? And this is a terrible follow focus. There's no hard stops. The gear pops off often. It comes loose where the swiggles, there's a lot of play. It's just not a great built follow focus. However, this works for my needs. So whether I'm operating this camera or another camera, usually I will just pull off of the barrel of the lens. It's easier for me, I can, I can react quicker. The way I hold the camera, like so, I could just pull easily, operate. Now, if I have a first assistant cameraman, focus puller, then I will have a wireless unit. I don't need to have this. 
Sometimes I'll put this on for aesthetic reasons. Sometimes if I have another operator and this is my B cam to my Ursa Mini, then yeah, I'll throw this on and it helps out the operator because not everyone pulls off the barrel, but we'll throw this on the build. It's, uh, there's like this two stage locking system here. It's not great, but here's the thing. Like I said, I've owned this now for almost 13 years. As bad as it is and as cheap as it is, it still has lasted. So props to Pro-Aim for building something that lasted that long. But yeah, like it works. I know that there's play, there's a good amount of play, but you know, if I'm doing some fast pulls or I just want something there, it's, it's not the worst thing in the world. But again, I'm in no hurry to upgrade. So this map box is a Tilta MB T12. I actually purchased this used from another YouTuber, uh, fellow DP Matteo Bertoli. I believe I said his name correctly. Um, he was selling this and uh, I picked it up and it's a solid map box. I've had my eyes on this model for a long time. You may have seen in my other rig video, I have an O'Connor map box. I still have that map box and I still use it. I like this one because I can use this as a clip on for my other lenses. It's a three stage, which I really like three stages and it's, it's very lightweight and handy. So I'm a fan of this map box and I recommend it. And so this is how I will ND the camera. I don't own any screw on NDs. I haven't found any that I like or that are, even though they say they're IR, they, I haven't been satisfied with the results. So I currently own four by five uh, format high-tech Firecrest NDs. They are true IR NDs and they are amazing. So you may notice this lens and some of my other DSLR lenses, they, the barrel extends when you zoom, right? What I'm looking to get to replace this for this camera is actually a uh, small rig map box. It's one of those little lightweight ones that they have for I don't know, I think it's like $75 or $80, or maybe it's even cheaper. But it's a clip-on, it's carbon fiber, it's lightweight. That's what I'm looking to get to use with this build and these zoom lenses. But in the meantime, this big Tilta will do the job. So next, we'll throw in my wireless unit. This is the same wireless unit I had in my 12K build video. It's the Cinegears Ghost Eye Wireless. I have still have this Teradek holder that I mentioned in that video from Small Rig. I've actually taken the wireless holder off of that 12K build, and I've had that component lying around for quite some time, just because I preferred to have the wireless on an arm that I could pop off really quick. So what I ended up doing was I put that Teradek holder on a 15 mil rod clamp and I put it in between the screen and the battery plate here. It works and I'm still trying to figure out the best place to put my wireless, but for right now and the time being, this works. Also, most of the jobs that I'm taking the pocket out for, I'm not bringing a wireless unit. All right. So the wireless is in. So it locks in and it stays on the holder right in between the touch screen and the battery plate. Now, obviously it obstructs the touch screen. On most shoots where I would be using this wireless in this configuration, I wouldn't be messing with settings too often or if I had to really access it, I do have a Bluetooth app on my phone. Also, the way that Blackmagic had designed their menu system, 
it's really easy to access some of the key features still with this obstructing the screen. So it still works. Now we'll add the monitor. This is a new addition to my arsenal. It is a small HD Cine 7 monitor with the RE license control. So I'll be doing a video soon where I compare my small HD Cine 7 to my former monitor, the Blackmagic Design 7 inch video assist HDR model. So yeah, this lives like this. And basically all that's left is just some cables, which I find with this camera, actually yeah, with any Blackmagic camera, cable management always seems to be an issue. Now to get this wireless to work, I actually run VNC out of the small HD, out of the out SDI port, over to the wireless unit here. So yeah guys, this is my Blackmagic Design Pocket 6K Cinema build. So there you go guys, that was my Blackmagic Design Pocket 6K Cinema build. Uh, I will list and link all the rig components down below in the description so you guys can find them online if you're interested in adding those to your camera. As I had mentioned earlier, this camera has worked a lot more this year than my Ursa Mini Pro 12K. Mostly due to the form factor, the fact that it, it's lightweight, it lasts a long time for the batteries that I have with it, I can get by with having very minimal crew with that camera and build. Whereas my Blackmagic Design Ursa Mini Pro 12K, it's a bigger camera, and usually when I rig that out, I like to have a camera crew. It just makes things easier because it's such a big build. And I, I really do love that camera. Actually, I'm filming on it right now. It just, the way I like to have that camera built out I usually will have a proper camera crew. So yeah, if you haven't already, check me out on Instagram at CWDP112, or you can check out my work at ChrisWarrenDP.com. I'm looking forward to a very busy 2024, so keep an eye out for new content coming. Till then guys, peace.